OK, Constantine, so we will start. So it's uh, two minutes down. So, yeah, so my name is Albik. So I'm uh, the partner with Inserian and working for uh, CAPP also, so the Center for Advanced Practical Project Management. And uh, Constantine uh, is the managing director for Inserian and who are the global partners for the target process APTO, APTO's target process. So, uh, so today we'll be seeing uh, the enterprise agile uh, planning uh, with uh, lean portfolio management and uh, the demo on the uh, API target process. So I'll, I'm handing over to Constantine for starting the session. So then I'll go with the demo. Okay. Uh, it's good to be unmuted, I guess. Uh, uh, good uh, evening, everyone. My name is Konstantin Popov. Obi, thank you for the introduction. Uh, before we jump into the target process uh, webinar and overview, I want to talk a little bit about some of the challenges that we are experiencing today uh, in the LPM space. Uh, let me share my screen. Uh, Obi, let me know when you can see my screen. Sure. Yeah, I can see the desktop. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I am going yeah. to for a second. So I'm going to take myself a video to conserve bandwidth. Okay. So um, uh, we'll talk a little bit about the context. Uh, we'll level set around what is lean portfolio management to make sure that we are all speaking the same common vocabulary and uh, uh, we'll talk a little bit about uh, the dimensions of lean portfolio management and uh, with that what is lean portfolio management uh, portfolio management aligns strategy and execution with an overall governance framework to be able to identify uh, and prioritize uh, various activities and opportunities that we see around the enterprise. We also want to make sure that um, uh, we align work to strategy. Uh, we also need to be able to adjust our funding accordingly, uh, as well as position our labor, align our people to a delivery of value. And uh, uh, once we do that, we need to be able to validate uh, that the work that we're doing, we are actually achieving the strategic objectives that the enterprise set forward uh, through the completion of the work and really showing that we're delivering the value. Uh, the focus area of the Lean Portfolio Management, uh, uh, there are several, but the most common ones are uh, strategy and investment planning, uh, lean governance, uh, and agile operations. Ensuring that our portfolio is aligned and is meeting the business needs, coordinating and supporting decentralized the program execution and decision making, as well as overseeing span audit compliance uh, and forecasting expenses. So with that is, uh, what are some of the key uh, drivers for, uh, for the Lean Portfolio Management today? And uh, we see that there are a lot of cloud adoption, which is probably the most common today. We're seeing that the enterprises are shifting from uh, a traditional waterfall approach to uh, using agile frameworks, more iterative development. There is a huge revolution uh, with the shift from project to product. Uh, Mick Kirsten and his book from project to product uh, really put it out best. Uh, if uh, we do not get good at product management. Everybody will be working for a handful of corporations like Amazon, Facebook, Google, Apple's, because they're getting really good at delivering value to consumers. And as we see in the case of um, Amazon, they started as the online bookstore and now they're sending space shuttles into, the, uh, into space and uh, manufacturing cars. So it's uh, they are uh, moving into the areas uh, that are not organic for them. It's outside of any type of either online commerce or software products, um, and they can do it better. They can take over traditional businesses and actually run them as productized companies and deliver better results and be more efficient doing that. 
And also, I want to mention the focus on customer centricity. Uh, the days when we will build it, they will come. They are um, uh, they're behind us. Uh, we've told people for 40 years, you have to sign the requirement documents in blood or no work will begin. And now we're actually looking for partnership with um, uh, with our stakeholders, with our customers, where we understand uh, what is important for them, why it is important, and they can give us uh, uh, frequent uh, feedback on, on the work that we're doing. I also want to talk a little bit about the IT-centric versus enterprise-wide initiatives. Uh, as an example, uh, let's look at the cloud adoption. Initially, when you start cloud adoption, you have to build a lot of foundational capabilities around uh, uh, infrastructure provisioning, uh, right? How do we automate a deployment of, uh, um, of resources in the cloud? Uh, next, we're going to figure out how are we going to build uh, our CI CD pipeline to be able to automatically deploy workloads uh, into those resources in the cloud. So a lot of this is kind of foundation. We don't need a lot of the input from our businesses, but we still want to do lean portfolio management. We still want to prioritize uh, our epics, uh, our features, uh, so it exists. But it's still largely IT-centric. So by the business, it is perceived as this IT thing that we're doing. So when does it become an enterprise-wide initiative? For again, let's look at the cloud adoption. When you start to build cloud native applications, uh, all of a sudden the question becomes from finance, okay, you are delivering value every two weeks. How do I capitalize and depreciate my asset? You are now building uh, products that are cutting across organizational boundaries and traditional charge code models. So how do I account for that in my traditional waterfall-based uh, cost center model? Uh, we are no longer assigning people to projects. We build persistent teams and we bring work to the people. Uh, so how do we realign our organization to do that? So you're now including not just IT resources, but you are including people that are managing our labor. You're including your finance, HR uh, ex executives. And a lot of times you're starting to incorporate, um, not a lot of times, but you need to incorporate your business customers, uh, internal or external, into the teams to ensure that you are uh, working together to understand what needs to happen, how it needs to happen, and what is the value associated with it. And that challenge is difficult because now we take something out of IT and ask everybody to use what we build. And there is usually a, a, a conflict. So how do we avoid this conflict with the use of Lean Portfolio Management uh, uh, solutions like target process? So we need to build a foundation. And the foundation is uh, uh, we need to establish the common work and take process. We need to build common taxonomy so we keep uh, we speak you know common vocabulary. We want to make sure that we build common prioritization uh, mechanism across the enterprise. Uh, we want to make sure that all of our initiatives are sequenced and operating on the same calendar. We want to make sure that we understand how do we create teams in this new world and how can we continue uh, to account for our labor. So with that, let's jump in a little bit more details. So what is the benefit of the common work and take process? But before we get there, let me ask you a question. Do you feel that I can get st stakeholders across the enterprise to sit down and convince them that we do not want to have any shadow work in the enterprise? And can I do it? The reality is I probably can. It is a very time bound exercise and, you know, it's a uh, uh, you know, there is very clear benefit to having all work visible across the enterprise. So what we get, you know, the benefits, we get all uh, work across all departments that is coming into the single pipeline. We're making everything visible, uh, no more planning, and then we have a compliance audit coming in and it's, we, you know, all hands on deck. So we just spent uh, two weeks planning and, you know, or we just went through the BI planning activity and now it's all gone. Uh, we can build lean budgeting guardrails. Uh, we can account for our innovation, R&D ideas. Um, 
and we also can create workflows for how we channel different types of requests to different teams effectively and we can prioritize resources uh, we will really what we're doing with a common work and take process we are building all of the demand what we call in the portfolio management world is that we see all of the work that has to happen on some sort of uh, prioritized uh, view so next common taxonomy so we got a bunch of this work is coming in uh, how do we create and compare work packages in IT to work packages in marketing to work packages Right. How do we make sure that we have a consistent approach, uh, you know, in, in different teams, in different uh, agile release trains, in different product lines, to, to, to digital platforms? And here again, we get together with the folk across the enterprise and we discuss what is that common taxonomy? And we're looking at the very top level at the strategic themes. What are the most important uh, uh, kind of uh, key areas for the enterprise? Uh, what are the portfolio epics? What are the epics, uh, features, stories, and then the team level activities like be it defects or issues or requests, you know, whatever that might be. Again, can I get a group of people and talk about the importance of having common vocabulary around work packages in the enterprise and can I get them to agree on what those are? Most likely, yes, because again, it's a very contained exercise. There is clear benefit to it that we collectively as a team can articulate and we can do that. Next is a common prioritization. We are creating a mechanism now. We got all of our work in a system and we were able to identify, you know, uh, common taxonomy apples to apples. Now we need to be able to prioritize them. And so it's a consistent across the enterprise process that every team is utilizing we uh you know we'll logically be able to compare one uh, uh one request to another we can create the many of the shelf prioritization mechanism with jeff being the most common uh in the agile world lately and uh you know we can apply it to a different work package we can build horizon planning things that we need to do you know today things that we need to do tomorrow and things that we need to do sometimes in the future and we can adjust those horizons but we always want to make sure that we are spending you know what is the most important thing for us today what do we need to spend money on what is coming up and how do we prepare for it and what do we need to invest in the future like quantum computing let's say right if we don't start doing something around it today we're not going to get there in two years uh, we also want to make sure that uh, we align our backlogs to an overall uh enterprise strategy and sometimes uh, we need to have hard conversations so common prioritization mechanism consistent one gives you the opportunity to reach agreement or work through a disagreement of what is the most important because we always know that people bring bias into what is important why we need to do certain things so next cadence and synchronization if so we you know we've gotten so far and uh, all of our teams are operating you know they start sprint some teams on monday some teams on thursdays some are operating in two weeks sprint some are three weeks sprint some on five weeks sprints and uh, uh, is it effective right so uh, not necessarily because you want to be able to plan together and review together and the reason for it is that we can minimize dependencies between teams. We also are aware what other teams are working through. And it's much easier for all of our stakeholders to attend ceremonies around very specific times. We're getting more efficient with that. And uh, uh, so, uh, like I said, supports uh, regular planning and cross-functional coordination, uh, tracking progress, uh, better dependence management integration uh, and also uh, control batch size and whip. It's like literally we are seeing how much work we can put through our teams and we don't plan too much. And again, I can sit down with a group of stakeholders across the enterprise and discuss why is it important and what kind of outcomes do we want to achieve through it and come to an agreement. Uh, come on team instruction. Here we're talking about how to consistently allocate resources to teams across the enterprise. It gives us an opportunity to uh, create supply. We basically see all of our resource pool 
and we see based on the capacity that we funded how much of the demand we can we can accommodate let's say my product backlog is 10,000 items and with the labor with the capacity that i build i can only accommodate 3,000. are the 7,000 not that important or do i want to maybe get another thousand done in order to achieve my strategic objectives so that, that gives me an opportunity to build that elasticity uh, into the process for i can scale up or down my teams as needed to achieve those strategic objectives. Also, the most important thing here is, uh, not the most important, but very important thing is we are able to eliminate time writing to resource allocation to a persistent team. That really helps enterprise to support a pivot to product management structure. Uh, so, you know, we just talked through five, uh, uh, five areas of the uh, lean portfolio management foundational that uh, that we were able to sit down and agree with enterprise stakeholders. So what we did in a way, it's a change management activity where we got all these stakeholders to speak common language. Uh, they have built common practices. So now I build a team of people that had come to an agreement, made a decision on five different foundational areas for the enterprise that have learned how to work together, speak the same language and understand the value of what we're doing. So our journey moving forward becomes a lot easier. Uh, next, you know, how to get there, we want to make sure that we, you know, that we're doing training uh, around all things portfolio management. Uh, around, you know, Scaled Agile has it. There are a bunch of other things that we can teach. Uh, change management, uh, getting all of the st enterprise stake stakeholders on board is extremely important. Stakeholder enrollment, enrollment and onboarding is critical. Uh, having a workshop with your customers to be able to facilitate the value stream mapping, Agile product delivery, lean portfolio management and such have an ability to onboard your stakeholders and your uh, team members into the new process is critical, but also sometimes you need to augment your team so onboarding external resources is the key. And coaching, you wanna make sure that once you are trained and enable everybody in the enterprise to do it, you want to be able to observe and coach. And lastly, you know, it is very important to put all of this together, right? Like any one of these processes is extremely important on their own, but when you put it together and you put stakeholders together, you're enabling the organization to move forward. Um, so target process is the tool that we have leveraged. We've deployed it in Chevron. Um, Gartner identified this as a, as a, as a, as a top quadrant uh, for lean portfolio management. It is uh, rapidly expanding and is becoming that enterprise management uh, a clean portfolio management tool. It's not just an IT centric tool, but really an enterprise. So, you know, with this, I'm going to turn it over to Obi and, um, you know, for the demo of the tool. Uh, thank you very much. If you have any questions, feel free to connect with me on LinkedIn or you can ask us at the end of the webinar. And uh, with that, Obi, over to you. Thank you, Gustavi. Okay, so. Let me know once you see my screen. Are you able to see my screen? Yes. Okay, so some quick uh, points regarding the uh, enterprise agile. So I'll just go through some of the slides and then we directly run through the uh, walk through the uh, demo. Okay. So as you already know, so the businesses are shifting from uh, waterfall to agile and most of the organizations are already in agile. Um, so what they are doing uh, 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 similar for what the thing that they want to do and what they need. So is uh, the faster time to market and increased uh, productivity and uh, improvements in the quality of the product, what they are going to deliver and they want to deliver uh, more value. So the Gartner predicts that by 2023, 80% uh, of organizations will have enterprise PMO that is focused on digital products. So 
So the goal of enterprise uh, agile planning is uh, so companies uh, don't want to adopt a framework that is force fitted or uh, you know over architected. So instead, they want to uh, one that is uh, flexible uh, and also it needs to use uh, or provide the governance um, that can scale scale with the uh, team as well as the whole organization. Uh, so the business agility to digitally transform is the main focus. So the focus on business and end user value and soft of software delivery and trying strategic objectives to the tactical work. So that is the main objective here and be able to prioritize work and uh, uh, breaking down the uh, silos. So the challenges what we face here are in the enterprise agile planning or uh, the uh, disconnected tools. The, um, the siloed teams. That is uh, you uh, the teams are working in uh, one product. The portfolio is in another uh, tool. So like that there are so many disconnected uh, tools. The, the teams are in siloed thing and the limited uh, value tracking. So those so there and the innovation is not so quick and it's somewhere it's not approved properly and moving on it's very slowly so the target process uh, is a software uh, platform so this is used mainly for the work and the portfolio management so which uh, uh, often facilitates uh, enterprise agility at all levels by enabling both business and IT to work in one holistic solution. So this is the only uh, lean agile workflow uh, management solution. So that is purposely built for the uh, evolving enterprise and it uh, provides visibility that helps an organization manage complex work and keeps everyone on the same page. And uh, so in target process users can easily visualize what's important, prioritize the work and make adjustments on the uh, fly for maximum uh, efficiency. So as uh, Constantine mentioned earlier, so this uh, um, the target process is recognized as a, a leader in the uh, Gartner Magic Quadrant for enterprise agile planning tools. So it, they were a leader for in 2020 and 2021 and also they were named in the foresters uh, value stream management wave in 2020. Um, so the target process facilities uh, enterprise uh, agility at all levels so as your deployment teams work with jira software or azure devops so you will get uh, program and portfolio level visibility on top of these tools. So uh, whether the teams uses Jira software or Azure tools, so this uh, target process will uh, get you the information from different tools and you'll be able to get the program and the portfolio level visibility on top of all these uh, tools. And uh, it also let uh, different business units uh, uh, get an integral part of the value delivery process by having the using daily tools such as uh, Miro, Salesforce, Zendesk, or uh, ServiceNow, so other products uh, related to um, the uh, DevOps tools like uh, Bitbucket, GitLab, GitHub, so those products also. Okay. And uh, the target process supports the extended model, so to uh, name a few, it supports the scaled agile framework, Scrum of Scrums, uh, large scale Scrum, disciplined agile delivery and also it supports the uh, scrum as well as the uh, Kanban method. So not only for the uh, scaling agile frameworks uh, and for the uh, the team level uh, frameworks also it uh, supports. Okay. And the target process solution library gives various uh, different levels uh, to uh, from idea management to the team management with the capacity planning, work planning, budgeting, test management, uh, team level planning program, everything. Okay. So with this, I'll jump to the demo part. Okay. 
So this is the Aptios uh, target process uh, tool. So um, this uh, you can manage various different levels uh, from uh, portfolio, large solution, program, team, uh, DevOps, so all these things. So this uh, the left side, so which you can see, so that gives uh, the various different views. So not only is uh, limited, but you can uh, create your own views or whatever we need to manage. So that also can be very much used here. Uh, so in this, uh, so the various different views and the various different roles. So from the portfolio, from program to team level, so you'll be able to manage it. Okay. And what you see here is the solution overview so that uh, what the target process shows. So you can manage the work plans. So where uh, it moves from the task to the user story, so user story to the feature, and feature to epic and to the portfolio epic. So then the various different work items related to that, that also you'll be able to uh, view and manage it. And you'll be able also be able to manage the vacations, capacity planning, and any goal management related to solution or program or team uh, objectives. And you can create various create and manage various different objective and key results. So the ultimate objectives at the top level, strategic objectives with the key results, what are the key results so that you can create and you can measure it. Okay. And other things are the budgeting, risk management, so all these things that you can do. So not to uh, minimize this, so beyond this, so, so these are uh, built in and we, we can make use of these solutions. So beyond this, if you want to use any of the solutions, so there is a solution library. So from there, so what type of solution that you would like to take so that you be able to take on. So for a product owner, any solution related if you want, so that if it is available that you can take it and install and you can make use of the system. So for a pick owner, if something is needed, for the portfolio management, if something is needed on a prioritization basis, if something is needed, so that also you can view and check. Okay. And uh, so this um, mostly in this uh, we'll be seeing on based on the safe uh, flow for portfolio. So the uh, portfolio, the workflows, everything that can be customized based on our needs and the terms. So whatever, so based on our organization or based on our project. So what terms that we need to use so that also can be uh, uh, modified. So in for this example, so we have modified the project as portfolios, uh, the program as groups and request as ideas, epic as capabilities, so like that. So now we have the uh, idea dashboard. So now I'm starting with the uh, dashboard. So we have the idea intake. So from the idea intake, so uh, you can create any of the ideas. So any new idea that you can create. And uh, so from that idea, so you'll be able to find out what are the different uh, uh, parameters that we need to fill in. So you can put the lean uh, charter. So you can prepare the lean charter the various uh, who are the requesters so that you can put the business benefits so all these uh, that you will be able to uh, fill in and on the right side also you can see other details so uh, the assignments so which team is uh, initiating that and uh, what's the creation date so when you start going to start it so all these informations that you can make and also you can make use of some of the custom fields that you will be able to create and make use of it And in the idea intake, so you'll be able to see what are the different ideas that are created and who created it. And uh, so the what is estimated effort and the, any relations that is there between any other ideas and what is the state of that, whether it is a new or approved or planned or under review. So all these informations you'll be able to see. And also you'll be able to see the horizon uh, budget guardrails. So through which you'll be able to find out so how much uh, uh, the project that the idea so that investing and extracting so how much is there so that you'll be able to see and whether uh, something is in the emerging state category or in the evaluating category so those the information that you'll be able to see on 
okay and uh, how each and everything is performing based on the uh, pi that is the uh, program increment and based on the ideas whatever we get and how it is uh, progressing you will be able to monitor the idea progress so whether uh, it is a new idea so um, what is the, how many number of new ideas that we have received so or how many are under review so all these informations that you will be able to uh, view on and in the dashboard so in the, uh, the portfolio level dashboards you have the solution investment category so in the solution investment categories you can find so what are the different solutions that are available and uh, so in which value stream that it is available and in which state it is there so those informations that you'll be able to see and the strategic objectives so the different strategic objectives and the key results for that so for each uh, strategic objectives uh, you can give what are the key results and you can measure how much is completed so whether the you achieved the uh, what is the value that the target value that you have given and how much that you will be able to achieve it so that also you'll be able to see it and based on how much how you are creating the strategic objectives and the objective key results you'll be able to see the strategic objective progress so uh, how much is the progress so mm, that you'll be able to find out and here you can see the uh, planned versus actuals so that information based on uh, how much uh, the work that for each pi that uh, based on the portfolio that you're working so that you'll be uh, doing on a business uh, level on the enabler level and the technical depth level so how the progress is running so that you'll be able to see okay. now we'll move one by one for the each of the portfolio level uh, the program level as well as the team level so in the portfolio details so you have the portfolio value streams so uh, the, there are different uh, portfolios and below each and every portfolio we have uh, value streams that is being created okay and also you'll be able to see how uh, the value streams are assigned to the agile release train okay. and uh, how the progress is going on for the portfolio that you'll be able to see it then you can uh, further break down and see how it is further broken down so for example the value stream banking banking value stream so that is further broken down into different uh, agile release trains so that the two agile release trains are core banking and channel support okay so the core banking so which are the teams that are working in core banking so that you will be able to view it okay so the bankers domain checkers compounders lenders uh, loan ranges so these are the different uh, teams that are working in the core banking agile release train and uh, for the channel support there are uh, two different teams that are working in and in the po product backlog portfolio uh, backlog so you'll be seeing the portfolio epics so in portfolio epics the list that you'll be seeing and uh, at each level you can manage the state so whether it is uh, in the planned stage or implementing stage or portfolio backlog stage or uh, so those uh, states that you'll be able to find out and what is the progress so that also you can uh, view and uh, based on cost also the budget so how much uh, remaining budget is there what is the actuals and uh, what is capex budget what is uh, capex actuals all these informations that you'll be able to uh, find out and uh, so this is the portfolio epic level and if you open it further so you'll be able to see the list of uh, capabilities okay so below the uh, portfolio epic you can see the capabilities and below capabilities you will be able to see the list of features that you are going to work on and below each and every feature so you'll be able to see the uh, user stories so what are the different user stories that you will be able to see okay so it shows so for this uh, feature custom graphic reports you, the, these are the various different user stories that you are going to work and what are the different bugs so that that also is showing here okay. 
and uh, so at each and every level so whenever you open so you will be able to see the related uh, the program increment so that is related to this user story and in team which team uh, the team iteration that it is happening so that also you will be able to see and the which portfolio that you will be seeing so if i open any one of the portfolio epics you will be able to uh, see the details so the description so about end-to-end -end digital onboarding. So the description about that part, EPIC, then EPIC hypothesis statement, and, and the lean business case. So these all uh, uh, has come from the idea. So while creating the idea, so, the, uh, so they create all these things. Okay. And what are the different capabilities? features so whatever we saw there so that will be to see and uh, so that is for the portfolio epic and same way you can see for the capabilities also so the capabilities so you can see what are the uh, different features that are coming under uh, capabilities and uh, at the same time you can see uh, that is coming under which portfolio and in which portfolio pick so there's information that you'll be able to find and what is the initial estimate for this and what are the efforts so all these informations that you will be able to uh, load on and simultaneously uh, for the features you can see the timeline also so how they are running it then for the user stories so features as well as the uh, so user stories so you will be able to see the uh, details so the description and what are the tactical uh, objectives so that you can get the team pa objectives so those informations also you'll be able to see and anywhere if there is any uh, bug so that also you'll be able to uh, see below the uh, feature okay. so the bug so that is being raised and this is related to which user story that you'll be able to see it here. So th this gives a clear uh, hierarchical structure from portfolio epic till the user story level. And uh, below each and every user story, you will be able to see uh, oh, what are the different tasks that are there. So there, those also you'll be able to find out. So if there are any particular tasks, so that you'll be able to see uh, here. Okay, but uh, currently there are no tasks for this particular task. So any task that you'll be able to uh, add it here. Okay, so how many ever subtasks that you need that you'll be able to add and you can uh, specify the assignment, the efforts and uh, how much progress and, and the, you'll be able to measure the time also, time measurements. So that is on the portfolio backlog, so which gives the list view with the full details from Epic to the uh, user story level. So then you can see the portfolio uh, Kanban, so where you'll be able to see on a board, so where uh, the different uh, features, how they are assigned for the different states from funnel evaluation, analyzing portfolio backlog, uh, planned and implementing stage. And then if it gives us the flexibility to see the portfolio roadmap also. So when he, different epics, when it is occurring, so those information, so you need to see from this particular stage so that you'll be able to find out. And the specific uh, milestone, so those also you'll be able to see, so which are uh, flagged here. Okay. And you can see uh, move the timeline and see what type of information that you want to see. And uh, certain things, if you want to modify, so you, it is dynamic, so where you can modify directly uh, within the uh, screen itself. So it adjusts accordingly the start date and everything. And it gets updated in the particular portfolio epic. Okay. So uh, we can see uh, by adjusting the whole information here. So this is about the portfolio. So what are the different things that you'll be able to see in the portfolio and the portfolio uh, dashboard? So uh, so this at the portfolio level. So the portfolio managers or the Epic owners, so they will be managing all these things. And now we'll move to the program program level. 
So in the program level, so we have the PA schedule. So how we create the uh, schedule for the program increment. So the different schedules of when it is occurring, when different program increment is occurring, so that you'll be able to see. And here also the timeline, you'll be able to adjust and see uh, what uh, in which timeline that you, you need to see the information. That is the the agile release train. So the core banking agile release train. So there are uh, uh, three PIs. So first PI is happening here for second PIs, third PIs and same way for credit check. Uh, generally strain these are the different uh, pis so that you can find out uh, based on this and you can also plan using this uh, screen so any new pi that you need to plan so that also you'll be able to plan here and then you can manage the feature list so based on the feature list so the features so what are the different features that you're going to uh, do and for which program increment that you're going to do so those information and uh, the uh, mischief uh, calculation. So you can give the uh, time criticality, use the business value and the job size, and then you'll be able to find the uh, mischief. So based on the changes, what you need to make, so you can update the time criticality, the user uh, uh, business value, the job size, so all these you can update and you be able to see the uh, WISCHIF and based on that, you will be able to prioritize also. So based, based on uh, WISCHIF, if you want to do the prioritization, so you can prioritize based on the WISCHIF. So which is it's the highest WISCHIF so that you need to start first. So based on that, you will be able to prioritize. And uh, so same like portfolio backlog. So here you can see the PA backlog. So uh, without the team I'll eliminate so I can use the filters to uh, remove unwanted uh, the teams so which whichever teams I want to see so that alone I can uh, select and I'll be able to uh, see on that and it, is, it shows uh, which team is working on which uh, PI and the different uh, book, um, cards that they are, you are going to work on. So the different uh, user stories so that you'll be able to uh, view and work on that. Okay. So this is uh, on the uh, PA backlog and you can do the capacity plan. So the capacity plan also you'll be able to do so uh, for the, so this is the backlog, the list of uh, user stories and the features that are available. And here you're planning, so the PA that is the, uh, uh, program increment, uh, so core banking one, so uh, the credit check core uh, PA one, so all these are available and uh, so you can see how much is the um, story points that, that you're using it. So for consumer banking, you use this much capital markets, this much risk scoring, this much and totally you have 1512 uh, points. So if I need, if you need to uh, add some more, so you can take it from the uh, backlog and you can move it here. So whatever is showing here, so this is the uh, story points. So if I want to, uh, so these two and I need to move it to this one, I can move it. Okay. So, and if I go ahead and I'll be able to see, so it was 1512 earlier, so now it has moved to 1592. So what is the uh, level of story points and how much is the availability? So based on that, you will be able to see that. And also you can see for this particular uh, uh, PI, there are how many features are there that you want to do it. So 134 features so that it is showing here. And in the total 197 features that are still in the backlog, so that are not at planned. And also you can see the program uh, board. So the program board shows uh, how uh, each and every PI and the features, how it is be, uh, related. So those program boards that it shows, you can see. Okay, and in the program board, so which uh, feature is linked to which feature that you will be able to see it. So I'll show the relationships. So I can see the relations. So I can see how uh, each and every 
uh, feature is linked to another feature. So whichever is showing in uh, green or light blue, so that is the uh, major link and whichever is showing in red. So that means that that is a blocker. OK, so that you need to be taken care and. Uh, whichever is showing in uh, the dotted line, so those means that uh, the, it is having some planning issue, so you need to adjust that. And so if you adjust it, so I will automatically work on. So it's showing from uh, backwards. So if you move that particular feature uh, before this particular date, so then automatically the planning issue will be fixed. And uh, you can also adjust the uh, zoom level and you can find whether. You can see less information on the card or more information on the card so that you'll be able to see and adjust by adjusting the zoom. And also you can see the report on the feature by team, so it shows uh, the different features that are assigned to the teams. OK, so that you can find and also you can uh, so uh, so various different reports that you can create it from here. So not only limited what I'm showing, so you can create various different reports, uh, the dashboards, uh, views, the list, board views, everything. And here if I need to include uh, something else and show, so I can show it here. OK, and I can show with the state information so you can see. Uh, so in done state, what are the different uh, features are available and uh, so in funnel stage what are the different features are available so that uh, i'll be able to see based on the uh, assigned team so this is the report and another report is a program predictability report so where you can see um, so based on the business value and the actual value so that achieved based on the uh, pi so you can find out whether it is falling within the 80 to 100 uh, range and you can monitor that. So how e for each and every team, how the uh, uh, program predictability is showing up and that you can manage it. And on the program, so finally you can see the program risk also. So what are the different? So during the PA uh, planning, so what are the different uh, uh, risks that you identified so that you can show it up. So which is in the different states within the resolved state or accepted state. So all these based on the teams so that you'll be able to see it. And then going on the team uh, details, so team details, you'll be able to see the sprint uh, planning. So you can do the sprint planning by team. So what are the different user stories that you are going to do? So so whichever these are not planned. So for this particular iteration, so which are the uh, user stories that you're going to plan and any bugs that you're going to address. So all these informations that you will be able to uh, manage. So this is the iteration planning. And here you can see the Scrum dashboard uh, details so where once again it shows the full uh, backlog list so already we saw the full uh, backlogs uh, with the uh, features user stories and bugs and it shows the burn down chart and you can see the team velocity also okay and what are the current impediments so that uh, that are there uh, and how you're going to manage and which team is uh, managing that and who is the creator and who is the owner of that. So all these informations that it will show up here. Okay, and in the backlog, so one second again. Okay. And here you can see the task board demo. So task board. So in the task board, uh, you can see the. So that is the. Uh, the backlog view. So this is a board view. So it's for the different uh, states, how it is, how the user stories are running. So which are in the open, which are in planned, in development, done. So those informations. And for the Kanban team, you can manage the uh, Kanban uh, board. So in uh, Scrum, you manage uh, various different uh, burn down charts and team velocity. So whereas in Kanban, you manage the uh, cumulative uh, flow diagram. Uh, so for each and every uh, how many count of records 
uh, based on the timeline that you can find out and the cycle time trend that you can capture in the cycle time variation, the aging work progress and the throughput uh, runs all these informations that you can add on. Okay. And this is the uh, team Kanban board. Uh, so the, earlier we saw about the uh, pro, uh, backlog and that is the list. So this shows based on the board, the different cards. OK, and uh, here you can assign. Uh, so if uh, the bugs or the uh, wherever the points are not mentioned, you can uh, mention uh, you can show it in a different color okay, so that you can see it. And coming to DevOps. So you can see the deployment status. So you, uh, that uh, particular feature is available. So when different, uh, the deployment are coming. So uh, what is next when which is in staging and which is in pre-production and how much are uh, put it in production. So all these informations based on the uh, portfolio so that you will be able to uh, view it. And also you'll be able to capture the incident uh, dashboard information. So like the uh, uh, mean time to uh, acknowledge, mean time to respond, and the mean time to uh, mean time before forecast. So all this information that you'll be seeing and you can capture the downtime, you can capture the incidents count. So you can, so this can be uh, taken from the various different tools that you use. So not only from target process, you can make use of the various different DevOps tools that you're using and uh, pull the information and you can and uh, view the result in one single uh, area. So these are the main uh, basic things that are the, in the target process. I'll so we are uh, just six minutes down, so I'll just quickly go through some of the other things that uh, the latest things that they have brought in. So the demand and supply. So the budgeting, so you'll be able to manage the budgeting. So how much is the portfolio available budget? So all these information that you will be able to uh, see. So whether the breakdown by um, allocated budget, what is the, what are the actuals remaining budget? What is the capex budget, capex actuals, all these information and how the work is being allocated. Uh, so for uh, the different uses and also you can see uh, whether a particular uh, work allocation is over allocated or not. So if it shows tick marks so that it is over allocated and otherwise it is not over allocated and what are the different expenses, revenue and uh, cost, how it is uh, coming in. So on a uh, uh, weekly basis, how much is the actuals that you are gathering? So all these informations that you able to capture. And you'll be able to find out the uh, team load also. So in team load, so the different teams, how they are working. So everything. So in bankers uh, and uh, dozen. So all these uh, are uh, properly allocated and everything looks good. Whereas in checkers, if you see, uh, there are some availability. So it is underloaded. So whereas in lenders, if you see, so that one particular portion, so that it is uh, over allocated. And you can see the allocation roadmap. Uh, so the, based on the allocation roadmap, you can adjust the allocation. So lenders, so there is an over allocation. So it is showing red and green because uh, some portions it is red and so, uh, uh, after that it is uh, green. So you can adjust here or if you want to move a particular thing so that also you'll be able to move it. OK, so that that can be adjusted. And in the financial governance, you'll be able to do the uh, portfolio uh, budgeting. So in the portfolio from the portfolio budgeting, so you can you take the uh, information. So what is the remaining budget? So what is the baseline budget? Uh, CapEx actuals, all these informations that you can take. And uh, then you can monitor that. So with the participatory budgeting, so you can uh, group it into three, uh, three or four different groups and they can give the different uh, budgets what they think for each initiative so that need to be done so you'll be able to do the part participatory budgeting and find out how it is being allocated and what how the progress is running and also you'll be able to measure the epic uh, budget allocation 
and uh, yeah so this is the uh, budget and cost uh, dashboard so where you can see the value stream budget uh, allocated budget versus cost and the budget uh, versus cost over time strategic theme budget so all these information that you can see and uh, finally we'll see the results uh, monitoring dashboards where it shows the details of the market rhythm so how the sales uh, everything is running for the um, uh, different value streams so that you'll be able to find out and you'll be able to see the uh, the nps score okay and the value delivered by different teams so that in a cumulative diagram you can see and the performance monitoring so how it is running so that you'll be able to see okay so these are the different features that are available and there are so many other uh, um uh, views everything that you can create and based on your need the reports roadmap uh, the list and board that you'll be able to create and there are other options so where you can be able to use on the uh, automation rules metrics your own uh, metrics that you can create custom rules and various different integrations that you'll be able to make use of so as i mentioned earlier Okay. So uh, basically, so for it gives value for every role. So whether it is portfolio or program or team level or the DevOps, it gives uh, value. And these are the other uh, reports, the value stream budget that is a funding value streams, the that uh, dashboard and the demand and the supply, the, that dashboard. And this is the OKR uh, board. And this is the demand available resources by capacity. OK, thank you. So any questions? We open to questions. Yeah, everyone's mic is enabled now, so you'll be able to uh, unmute yourself and ask any questions. So you are here to answer. No questions. If there are no questions, any any particular feedback that you would like to give? No. Okay. Okay. So if uh, there are any requests for uh, your uh, uh, organization any particular demo is required specifically for your organization you can contact any one of us and they will be happy to help and uh, Constantine would like to add something absolutely thank you very much everyone for attending and uh, if you do feel uh, you know the need or you have any questions to connect later feel free to reach out on LinkedIn or via the email Obi thank you very much for the informative demo uh, once again, target process, you know, that, uh, you know, really a solution that gives you an opportunity to take your uh, lean portfolio management um, to the next level. And I'm sure that it will help all of your organizations. Uh, I mean, you can help all of your organizations by starting conversations with your leaders around lean portfolio management. So most of luck on, on the way with your transition. Uh, and we're looking forward to hearing from you. Thank you, Obi. Thank you, Constantine. Thank you, everyone, for joining in. Have a nice evening. Thank you.